Good morning. Christ is in our midst. Oh, some of you knew the response, A+. plus. Whenever I say Christ is in our midst, your response is, He is and ever shall be. Because, brothers and sisters, being in Christ's presence is the most important thing you will ever do in your life. Period, full stop, end of discussion. And the reason why that's true is because just like a lamp cannot have light unless it's plugged in, so we humans cannot have life in us unless we're connected to the source of life. And that source of life is Jesus Christ. Period, full stop, end of discussion. Ain't no other uh, outlet our plug will fit in. It just ain't going to fit. That's all. Folks, pay attention to me. Connected to Christ, you're alive. Disconnected from Christ, well, you know. And I say that this morning because I love this passage of Scripture in the Gospel. I love it. Because I love when Jesus confronts folks who think they're inside and who are really outside and shows us that those folks who think they're outside are really inside. I love this. Because it calls me to do spiritual inventory on my own life. And I've got news for you folks. Being healed ain't no fun. I don't know if you've ever had an injury before and having to go, oh, you know my situation. I'm having to be mommy and daddy at home and having to uh, fetch this and that and the other. And um, I would just, I'm just going to be honest with you. My precious bride broke her ankle. And she dislocated the ankle. And in the injury of the ankle, tendons were torn and ligaments were torn and bones were broken and surgery had to be had. And she's laid up. Ask her if she likes getting better. She'll say, no way. Getting better is hard. Do you, do you see where I'm going here? Getting better is not easy. Anybody who tells you that therapy and getting better from a physical injury is easy has never gone through it before. Well, if that's true of a physical injury, then becoming healed spiritually is no easy task. In fact, Jesus today confronts the real difficulty of being healed spiritually and having my relationship with God healed in a very, very powerful way. And he uses a Roman centurion as his example. You know what a Roman centurion is, don't you? That's the police. Those are the Roman soldiers. These are the occupiers of the nation of Israel, the foreign occupiers. Guess what? These folks weren't popular. They weren't popular. They were hated. The Jewish people hated these men, hated them. And that makes sense. If all of a sudden the state of Georgia was occupied by a bunch of uh, folks from up, up north... Oh, wait a second. That happened, didn't it? Don't get me wrong. God bless y'all. But you can understand that an occupying army is not a popular thing in the nation that it's occupying. How surprised we... Americans were when we got to Iraq and we were, th we were thinking they will, they will greet us as liberators. Swing and a miss. Over and over again, you've got to understand this Roman centurion is not a popular man. The Jews considered him an outsider. Do you know what many pious Jews thought of Gentiles? And that's what this Roman centurion was. He was a Gentile. Do you know what the, Jew, the pious Jews called Gentiles? Lower than dogs. Lower than dogs. Because the Jews for centuries had prided themselves on having a unique relationship with the one true God. 
And that unique relationship was so special and so wonderful that God had given His Word to the whole world through the nation of Israel. If a group of people had any reason to be kind of, well, goodness, it's nice being the chosen race. It's nice being the folks God picked to tell the whole world the truth. That's kind of nice. I like that. But by the time that Jesus came among them, the Lord had to confront these Jews who had had the truth all these centuries with the fact that this Roman centurion, this hated Roman centurion, Jesus looks at this Roman centurion and the faith that the Roman centurion showed. You know what the faith was, don't you? The Roman centurion came to Jesus and said, Lord, my servant is paralyzed. I know exactly how he feels. My precious presbytera is paralyzed. She can't move. Would you heal my servant? Jesus said to the centurion, well, sure, man, let's go. That's the Father Barnabas translation. Sure, man, let's go. Let's go and heal your servant. And the Roman centurion reacts in a very interesting way. He says, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come into my house. This Roman centurion knew that if a Jew walked into a Gentile's house, that Jew was ceremonially unclean. He couldn't do any work in the temple until he had made a sacrifice because he was unclean, because he had dared to walk into the house of a filthy Gentile. And so the Roman centurion said, I'm not worthy for you to come into my house. All you have to do is speak the word, Lord, and my servant will be healed. And the, the Roman centurion said, I understand authority. I'm a centurion. I have soldiers under me. If I tell a soldier to go do something, he does it. If I tell my slave to go do something, he does it. All you have to do is give the word, Lord. I, un I know who you are. I understand who you are, Jesus. You have authority over sickness. You have authority over life. You can restore life. You can heal. You don't have to come. All you have to do is say the word. Do you know what the Bible says? Now, folks, if you marvel God, you've pretty much done a big thing, okay? The scripture says... Jesus marveled at his faith. And he looked at those around him and he said, I have not found this great a faith in all of Israel. All of the so-called insiders didn't believe as great as this outsider. And then Jesus goes on to say, there will be people coming from east and west. What he meant was there are going to be tons of outsiders coming to sit at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of God. There are going to be tons of outsiders that are going to come and find faith. But those who have been insiders their whole lives will find themselves outside where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. And why is that? Because, brothers and sisters, it is easy to forget and hard to remember. It is easy to be wounded. It's hard to be healed. And unless we stay focused, unless we stay attentive, unless we stay awake to our own spiritual condition and who Jesus Christ is, we will constantly find ourselves, even though we've had every spiritual advantage in our lives, we will constantly find ourselves outside the kingdom of God, if we neglect our faith. Our Orthodox Christian faith is meant to be practiced, not simply paid lip service to. Our Orthodox Christian faith will always be experienced best by those who take it seriously and practice it on a daily basis and allow our faith to shape our attitudes, our actions, our choices, our our thoughts and our beliefs and our behavior. When our faith is so integral to who we understand ourselves to be, when our faith is so important to us that we actually practice it instead of merely paying lip service to it, then we will understand who God is. That Roman centurion got it better than all of the faithful Jews all around Jesus because that Roman centurion understood who he was and he understood who Jesus was. 
Lord, I am not worthy. I know my condition. I'm honest about my need for God. No one, no one, no one, no one will ever be healed from the spiritual illnesses of their lives until they admit they need to be healed. That Roman centurion was honest with himself and he was honest with Jesus Christ. He knew his condition and he knew he was unworthy. But his faith made up for all of his so-called unworthiness. And so Jesus answered his prayer. And the reason why the centurion could understand his need for Christ was because he understood who Jesus was and who Jesus is. May I make a promise to you this morning? This morning, to the extent that you understand Jesus Christ and who he is, not merely as a wise fellow, not merely as a wonderful Jewish rabbi that lived 20 centuries ago, but the actual Lord and giver of life to you and me in this day, at this moment. Those of us who realize that have no problem doing the hard work of spiritual healing. We have no problem understanding the necessity of practicing the spiritual disciplines of our faith and allowing those spiritual disciplines to reorient our lives to become the men and women that God has called us to be. This morning, brothers and sisters, regardless of the happy accident of your birth, regardless of your own blindness to your own needs, regardless of how many times you've sat in a church building, regardless of how many times you've repeated old words, Today, in this moment, in this place, to the extent that you know who you are and you know who Jesus Christ is, that is the extent that you are part of the kingdom of God. To the extent that you don't realize that, that is the extent that no matter what you say with your mouth, your word your life says you're an outsider. No matter where you're from, no matter what you're doing, today, are you inside or are you out? Are you doing the hard work of communion? Or are you allowing past victories to allow you to go to sleep to your need for Jesus Christ today? Today, everything is prepared for you. All that you need is here. May God grant you the peace and the joy necessary to be an insider and not an outsider. Amen.